good looking individuals. We're going to go over Capcom's presentation on Monster Hunter Stories 2, and we're going to talk about the multiplayer co op, monsters, and more. And we're going to start right now. First, we want to talk about the multiplayer in the game. Right now, in multiplayer, this Voltron is going to attack this Velocidrome with a power attack. The Velocidrome, as you can see on the right side of the screen, is going to use a technical attack. And there's nothing I can do that can change that. And because the Velocidrone is an NPC and its partner is also an NPC, there's no control or communication you're going to have with this. I could try to change monsties to see if I can do something. Uh, how about this? And no, it doesn't. That, and no, it didn't change at all. But instead of an NPC player, if it was multiplayer, my rider partner would have the ability to change monsties to something that's more advantageous against a Bulldrome. Which is funny because Velocidromes technically use speed attacks, except this one is using a technical attack. Good old NPC RNG. And now we're fighting a Kuluyaku, which power attacks are good against, and now they're using a speed attack. Which is also disadvantageous. Pairing up with another human being would help eliminate this weird RNG. With another player character, it'll be easier to coordinate attacks like this. So instead of having battles based on RNG, you can have battles based on skill and know-how. Which means it'll be a lot easier to take out harder opponents. And bonus, you get to do it with a friend. Here's what they show in the presentation. They have a gameplay segment where the producer, Ryoso Tsujimoto, and the game director, Kenji Oguro, show off a co-op expedition quest. You start these co-op quests by going to the quest board, going down to the bottom menu and selecting multiplayer, and selecting online or local multiplayer. You can either choose to host a room or join one. To start this quest, only the host of the room needs an expedition ticket. During these co-op quests, many different types of dens spawn in the area, so players can gather a variety of eggs. During these quests, players can move independently and start fights on their own. The player that's not a part of the encounter can choose to join a fight or not. The fight will be shown to be taking place in this red dark area. And it looks like the player who's free can join the battle at any time, even after the battle has already begun. Oh, that's Monoblos. Monoblos confirmed. It looks like players can gather eggs at the same time. They show off the Palamute egg, which has a Kimura symbol. They show off two striped eggs. The blue striped egg is a Legiana. We'll have to find out what the orange striped egg is later. And during the presentation, they state that players can play co-op quest solo with an NPC partner. The Monster Hunter Stories 2 presentation that happened on July 2nd began with a musical performance of the main opening theme, Scarlet Land, lit up by the heavens. This song's vocals are performed by Misaki Fukunaga. She's a musical artist with three albums, and I enjoy how these three albums are named. They're not called number one or number two, but they're called Sharp One, Sharp Two, and Sharp Three. Her musical track sounds pseudo-rock and instrumental in genre. And if you want to quick listen to her music, there'll be a link providing previews of her tracks. The link is in the description. In the next section, they give a brief synopsis of the story. You play as a brand new writer, following in the footsteps of your grandfather and legendary writer, Red. At the end of the demo, you meet a Wyvurian girl named Aina, and she once knew Red. She gives you Red's kinship stone and an egg from the Guardian Ratha. Rothlos around the world are fleeing, and a glowing light has been emitting from the ground. In the meantime, the hunters and the Nergiganti riders are trying to steal the Ray's Wing Ratha. Next, they talk about turn-based combat. They discuss utilizing weak points, getting eggs from dens and rare dens, going to stables to hatch those eggs, and they discuss the rite of channeling, which is used to transfer genes. They also display that you can choose a gene to transfer into other monsties. They later show monstie riding actions. Nursilla, which is confirmed, can climb scalable walls such as vines. Laggy, which is confirmed, can swim. And Nargahuga looks like it has a stealth ability to help avoid encounters. They show their last trailer, and then they show a bunch of title updates. In July 15th, they released Title Update 1, which is where you can receive a Palamute Monsty. They state that some game progress is needed to accept the quest. This may imply that the quest availability may be near the late game, but we'll see. In August 5th, there's Title Update number 2, where they have another co-op quest with Kulf Taroth. Kulf Taroth cannot be acquired as a monsty, but once you defeat this monster, you can get materials to forge powerful equipment. Later for this update, they have Hellblade Glavinus and Bolt Reaver Astalos. Good to have these deviants back. In early September, they have title update number three. Here they're releasing more deviant monsters, such as Soulseer Mizutsune, Elder Frost Gameth, and Oroshi Kirin. In late September, they have title update number four, where they're going to have another co-op quest with Kulf Taroth with high difficulty. They're releasing more deviants such as Dread King Rothalos and Molten Tigrex. But wait, there's more. In October, they're releasing title update number 5, where they're going to release Silver Rathalos, Gold Rathian, and another co-op quest with high challenge of a secret monster. I don't know, that silhouette looks like Vitalis to me, but we'll have to wait and see. With this defeated secret monster, you'll gather materials to make powerful equipment. And other than the Palamute quest, 
every other quest is post-game content. And of course, the Twitter post that's seen throughout the world, the Monster Hunter Stories 2 roadmap. Wow, look at all this content. Can barely even put it all on one screen. Next, they show off the Elder's Lair. The Elder's Lair is a massive area where you can test your skills, encounter high rank monsters, and take on challenge quests. So it appears that there's going to be a lot of post-game content, similar to Monster Hunter Stories 1. And I can't believe they're releasing deviant monsters. In this image, they show off Dread Queen Rathian, Thunderlord Zinogre, Bloodbath Diablos, Grimclaw Tigrex, and Silverwind Nargakuga. And there's even Elder Dragons they can make as monsties, such as Kushala Dalra, Valkana, Kirin, Nurgigante, and one of my favorites, Teostra. In the later segment, they talk about development stories. They talk about the origins of the first Monster Hunter stories. They show off the presentation style and model comparisons of both games, how they go into the cooperative implementation, and an in-depth analysis of five different characters. They end up showing that Monster Hunter Rise save data and Monster Hunter Stories save data are compatible with one another. So that Monster Hunter Story save data it will give you a kinship talisman in Monster Hunter Rise and layered armor. And in Monster Hunter Stories, you can get a Kamur layered armor from Monster Hunter Rise. July 9th cannot come soon enough. This presentation has got me so excited and I just, I just can't wait. I'm really looking forward to collecting all these new monster eggs, which means I'm going to need a lot of egg space to collect all those eggs. I have a video right here that can show you how to expand your egg space in Monster Hunter Stories 2. What did you think about the presentation? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching another Pookie Boogie video. Stay healthy, stay strong. Catch you next time.